in today's lecture we will cover the concept of uh, conductivity and introduction to conductivity and the method to measure them it is for probe and two probe what the advantage of four probe over two probe method for a material there are various ways to define define or describe a material its optical properties their band gap similar for example the band gap conductivity this is very specifically important because all the electronic things work or involve semiconductor the advantage of semiconductor is that by doping them we can actually control its conductivity we can control charge carrier concentration and this is the material property which has wide range for example for insulating for insulator for example like quartz the value is as low as 10 to the power 20 ohm with the inverse while for metals the value of conductivity is usually 10 to the power 7 around 10 to the power 7 ohm meter so if you see there are 10 change from insulator to metal as high as 10 to the power 27 of order for a single metal for a single property there is a huge order of difference between them so that's why this has also become important now for introduction we know the very basic form flow we apply a current it has a resistance so in which because of which there is a voltage drop across it. For a basic property, we know if we have a wire, it has a length L. We have a wire very long, small, it has a length L. So the as the length L increases, R also increases. But at the same time, if the area of the wire increases, the R actually decreases. So it, it gets more path for current to travel across. So R, which is resistance, is dimension dependent. Properties. And this is for, and this is defined as R by rho L upon A. Length, area. The important concept or important quantity is resistivity. Which is independent of the dimension. And the conductivity is the inverse of the resistivity. So resistance which is dimension dependent. Resistivity is dimension independent and inverse of resistivity is actually the conductivity. Now, as we move forward, how we actually measure it? So, let's say we have some sample like this one, and we want to measure its conductivity or its resistivity. So, this is made of some material. So, we have to connect a wire or probe across it, right? And we will connect a voltmeter across it to measure the voltage drop across it. And also we have to supply a current. So we will supply a current using a battery. And we will measure the voltage drop across it. So this is called two probes. So in this matter, supply of current and measurement of the voltage
is using the same two probes. They are, they are same two probes, which also supply current at the same time, also means are voltages. Now, one thing to introduce here is that if there are two different materials and we they are in contact with each other, they will develop a contact resistance. As we know, every material has a different uh, position of the Fermi level. Like if we have a aluminum at a certain uh, Fermi level position, and we have a gold, we also have different Fermi level position. If you contact them, there will be a barrier between them because they have different Fermi level position. So this barrier actually introduce contact resistance. And there will be a voltage drop across it. So the voltage of that beam is actually will also involve the voltage drop because of this contact. So this will introduce inaccuracy in the measurement. Right? The concept of Fermi level I will explain later in into the in coming lectures. So this become important the contact resistance. So as I mentioned, what happened? So this is the sample. So if we plot voltage drop across a very, very high conductive, very less, at the contact, there will be a certain voltage drop. Then as the sample length increases, there will be a voltage drop. And again, there will be a drop because of the different contact. So this extra voltage drop that it has, it will create inaccuracy. To avoid this, we introduce the concept of four probe. It is also very helpful. Now, what will happen in the four probe method? Is it linear problem? Is a sample surface, and there will be four probe. Yeah, probe. So one, so two, and so three, so four. This is one, two, three. And four. So they are also contacting with the material, so there will be a contact position. So I am explaining it like this. And we call RC1, RC2, RC3. RC4. Like this. So, what we do in the four probe method, we apply current at outer probe and measure the voltage drop across inner probe. So, what we are doing, we are separating the probes of the current application and the voltage drop that we are doing. Earlier it was in the same, same probe as applying current and also measuring the voltage. Right? Between one and four, we apply current, and two and three, we measure voltage. Now, as a voltmeter, what it has, voltmeter has very high in internal impedance. Because of this very high internal impedance, it draw a very little current. So the volt, uh, therefore, whatever the voltage drop will happen, will happen across the sample. Not, not the across the probe or contact resistance. In this way, we avoid the contact resistance. Right now, what we are doing, we apply now this until now whatever we mentioned was 
DC conductivity, where we apply a DC source, and in response to this uh, DC voltage, there is a flow of current, which is basically flow of electron. But there are materials, ionic materials, which also involve the movement of ion. Right? So, they usually when the movement of ion they do not go out of the circuit. They remain in, inside the material. So, for example, if we have a material, it has ions in them. Right? For example, let's say it has ions, which are mobile. And we apply a DC bias. So what will happen? This is the positive. So it will attract the negative ion on this side. And this is negative. So it will attract positive ions. So this will create an internal electric field. I internal electric field, which is opposite to the electric field of the battery. So this internal electric field that is developed in response to the external field that we are applying, they will cancel the internal for so more, there will be no charge current, charge flow. So they will not be connected. In this case, what we do, we apply a current or let's say voltage, not a DC, but AC. What it has, AC also has frequency component. And depending upon the frequency of the signal we apply, we get different values. They are different curves we get actually. Now we have a resistance. It has no frequency dependent component. It's so it doesn't depend on the frequency, but for the case of capacitor, we know its impedance is given as k omega c, where omega is frequency. So what does that mean? If omega is very high for capacitor, jet c will be very low. And when if the omega is zero, frequency zero, jet c is infinite, which means if we apply DC supply to, to the capacitor, it acts as a blocking, it acts as an open circuit, it will not allow DC to pass through it. Similarly, for the inductor, we have j omega L. So it has positive correlation with the frequency. Higher the frequency, higher the inductance it will have. So this is the basic introduction. Now we will, in the next coming lecture, we will develop a model for the conductivity because of only because of the electrons in the material.